how very nice it is to have the girls and boys from three different schools and their teachers uh, here at Ironmongers Hall today. I'm the master, and that means that for one year only, I'm allowed to be in charge of this hall. I'm so excited to think about what stories we're going to get today. I've absolutely no idea. I'm a little bit nervous about it all, but I hope that some of the stories will have my two favourite things, and that is they won't be too complicated. I don't like very complicated stories, and I like some of the stories to have a happy ending. So I hope that's going to happen, but I don't know whether it does or not. Anyway, very good luck, everybody. Thank you for coming, and I hope you have a really good afternoon. What if the world was black and white? Last Wednesday night, when I was going to sleep, I began dreaming of a world in black and white. I woke up, went to the bathroom, put my toothpaste on my toothbrush, but when the toothpaste came out, it was black with white squares in it. Instead, instead of a minty taste, it was licorice. Ew! This was very, very unusual. Her favourite cat, Merlin, must have followed his master all the way up the stairs and into the attic. The collar seemed to be a size that would fit him, she thought. She took the collar out of the box and placed it around his neck. She could not explain what happened next, but she felt some, that something had transformed in the room and shuddered with what it might be. Then nothing happened. I don't know what I was expecting, really. Hello. Margaret turned around suddenly as she wondered who could have spoken to her, but there was no one else in the room. She started to turn back around when the same voice came again. Hello. She realised it was coming from her cat Merlin. You can speak. Suddenly it all made sense to Margaret. The collar wasn't just a simple collar. It had the ability to let the cat speak to a human. Suddenly she didn't feel so lonely anymore. Imagine what the world would be like if mythical creatures were real. We could have unicorns in our gardens. And dragons in our castles. Even giants in the clouds. We could have a giant disco. Watch out though, they could stomp on you or even smoosh your house in town. We could fly into town on a pegasus. What if the pegasus pooped in our heads? Gross! As we looked through the window, the rain splashed on the ground. It was miserable. Then we asked ourselves, what if we didn't get wet in the rain? We all put on our Wellington boots and splashed around in the pouring rain. Then we realised that we weren't getting wet and started to wonder if our costume were becoming a reality. Could fly. There once was a girl named Alice who had a dream that she could fly. Just as her dream was coming to an end, she felt a tickle on her nose and she woke up and noticed a butterfly on it. The butterfly flew off her nose and out of the window. She started to rise out of her bed and realised that she was floating towards the sky. She realised that she was floating at the same height as the butterfly and off into space. It was like she could touch the stars. One sunny day in July, the Quinns family went out to the shopping market called Foodland to find that there wasn't Hubert the shopkeeper or Marley the manager, let alone food. There was only five packets of seeds. Oh my gosh, we're going to starve. Calm down. Grab them all. So they took the seeds home and planted them. As they were planting them, the little sister sang, Grow little seeds. Grow, 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 or I will. 
Go, go, go. What if we had clouds over our heads to show our feelings? It was a perfect day, and my best friend and I were, were play fighting in the playground. Seconds later, I felt a raindrop on my forehead. I looked up and found clear, sunny skies. My mind was boggled as I thought about where the water came from. Still perplexed, I felt another raindrop. I gazed upwards and saw a cloud getting darker and darker. I thought about the weird thing with the cloud in the playground when I got home. I started to wonder if I had emotional powers, if I could express myself through the cloud that I had found above my head. This thought filled me with happiness, and when I looked above my head, the cloud had turned yellow. I tried to run away from the cloud, but it followed me everywhere. I started to feel frustrated, and this is when I found that the cloud had turned orange. What if everyone had superhero powers? Imagine flying as fast as a rocket, speedily sprinting in seconds. Imagine the dream, rescuing people, saving lives, no more robbing or bullies, everyone would be in a happy land. Imagine the nightmare, villains robbing, lasers shooting, property destroyed, Villains taking over the world. <laughs> Everything vanished. Looking closer at it, he realised with a shock that it was a photo of his parents. He couldn't think who could have sent it as his parents had passed away a few years ago. While he sat there, he became very upset as he remembered that he hadn't always been very kind to them. As a boy, he had run away on several occasions, skipped school and even got in trouble with the police. This has caused his parents to constantly worry about him. He threw the photograph across the room. As it landed, a bright light shone from it, blinding him for a second. Suddenly, an arm reached out from the photograph and pulled him into it. What is life? Life, life is wonderful things, things, like the aurora borealis, holding your newborn baby brother. Life is a chance to succeed, to discover who we really are, who we were meant to be, and the real me. Life is to discover what life really is. Life is to make mistakes and learn from no. No matter how big or small, always stand tall. Discover yourself, who we are. Wonder about these things as you hang upside down from the monkey bar. So remember what I said earlier on, never stop being curious about the world because as you get older, you're going to be the people who can change the world. You're going to be the people who, if you stay curious and you keep asking questions, even probably one of the most important things is to ask questions that we don't yet know the answer to. Because you'll be able to, by, by being curious and by keep asking those questions, you'll be able to build the kind of world that you deserve. And I know that having talked to so many of you today, you'll be, you'll be building a, a world that we can all be proud of. So thank you very much and give yourselves a great big round of applause.